Buffalo Wild Wings has deals on deals on deals. Like buy one, get one half off wing Tuesdays, buy one, get one free boneless Thursdays, and wing bundles from $9.99. Order now at buffalowildwings.com. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I'm E.G. Marshall. We all have different ways of looking at things, like the artillery sergeant who said that cannon were made by taking a hole and encasing it in steel. And sometimes different points of view can open the door to mystery, especially when one of those viewpoints embodies a logical impossibility. Honey, today can't be Wednesday. It's, it's Tuesday, our anniversary. No. Yesterday was Tuesday. But we're going out for dinner. Why aren't you dressed? I was dressed last night. We were supposed to go out for dinner last night. Well, then why didn't we? Because you never came home. Our mystery drama... The Missing Day was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Percy Granger and stars Russell Horton. We are sponsored in part. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There are days we circle on the calendar so we do not forget them. And there are days that are so close to our hearts or so burned into our minds that we cannot forget them. But what about the days we cannot remember? Not the ones we would merely like to forget but the ones we cannot summon up any memory of at all. And what if one of those days was not years in the past and faded by time, but yesterday? We're in a town in Arizona at a nuclear manufacturing plant. Hello? Uh, hi, Bonnie, it's me. Just uh, calling to tell you I am finally on my way home. You sound tired, dear. Has it been a rough day? Yeah, afraid so. But I'm going to forget all about it the minute I walk out the door. Hey, uh, you haven't forgotten what day this is, have you? <laughs> You're asking me? Our anniversary. Good for you, but I bet you can't remember which one. <laughs> Very funny. And uh, you know what that means, don't you? Dinner, just the two of us, out. What a coincidence. I just happened to be putting the finishing touches on my makeup. <laughs> I'm just on my way out the door. I'll be home in 20 minutes. All right. Bye, honey. I love you. I love you. Excuse me. Huh. Uh, what? You're Arthur Cummings. Yes. You're the president of this plant here. Yes, yes, I am. Which specializes in the manufacture of nuclear reactors. Well, excuse me, well, what do you want? I wonder if I might have a word with you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in a heck of a rush just now. It won't take long. In fact, it'll take no time at all. Well, perhaps you could make an appointment with my secretary. I'd rather not do that. Oh, I'm sorry, that's just what you're going to have to do. No, Mr. Cummings, that's not what I'll have to do. Uh, what are you... Uh, uh, what's that... What, what's that thing in your hand? What do you do? Oh, hello, Mrs. Cummings. Oh, Sheriff, thank goodness. What's the trouble? It's Arthur. He hasn't come home. Oh, when did you expect him? He called me two hours ago from the office. He said he was just on his way out the door. Well, was he delayed? Have you checked back with his office? Oh, of course. And, and, and I phoned every department in the whole plant. No one's seen him. Well, is his car still there? No. They checked the parking lot. It's gone. Well, he hasn't been hurt in an accident. At least nothing's been reported. But something's happened to him. 
We were supposed to go out for dinner tonight. It's our anniversary. Oh, well, maybe he stopped to pick up something. A present. <laughs> but, but it's been two hours. He specifically told me he was coming right home. Oh, something's happened to him. I, I know it. Yeah, well, what kind of a car is he driving? A, a white and blue 77 sedan. Mm-hmm. License? Oh, LX1089. Okay. Well, my deputy and I'll drive out over the route between here and the plant and have a look for him. No sign of Mr. Cummings' car anywhere, Chef. Uh, here we are at the plant. Do you think maybe he's been kidnapped? <laughs> the Cummings aren't that rich, Joey. Uh, I wasn't thinking of money. I was thinking of information. Huh? Yeah, the, the information he must carry around in his head. All that nuclear stuff they make. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. But my guess is he just took a detour downtown to get something for his wife. <laughs> He's like me. I can never figure out what to buy a woman. Takes me hours. Yeah, except that it's after eight. Most of the stores are closed now. Yeah, I'm going to check around the plant for myself. You contact the highway patrol and put out an all-points bulletin for Mr. Cummings' car. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Cummings. Still nothing? No. No trace of him yet. But, but it's been 24 hours now, a whole day. What can have happened? Well, he got word out over the whole six-state area. If he's here, we'll find him. But, but he just can't have vanished. Oh, I'm sure he hasn't. I'm so worried. You know, they work with radioactive materials at that plant, and, and well, well, anything could happen. Well, I'm aware of that. It's what concerns us, too. I mean, well, we don't understand yet all the things radioactivity could do to us. How it could change us or... Well, or... now, now, now. I, I don't see how it could be anything like that, Mrs. Cummings. Uh, you talked to him. He seemed perfectly fine, didn't he? Yes, he said he was feeling tired. Uh-huh. His secretary saw him leave the office. But still, what if... He's been affected somehow, without even knowing it. Hello, I'm home. Art? Word. Hi, honey. All ready to go? Mr. Cummings. Oh, oh hello, Sheriff. What are you doing here? Well, is something wrong? Well, what's, what's the matter with you two? Art, where have you been? I'm nowhere. Just coming home. But, but what happened? Well, nothing. I said I'd be here in 20 minutes, didn't I? I called at 5. Now it's 20 after. Hey, what's going on? You're not even dressed. You told me you were putting your makeup on. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Cummings, your anniversary was yesterday. What? Huh? This is tomorrow. Well, what is this, a joke? Uh, <laughs> honey, did I really get the date mixed up after all and you uh, got the sheriff here to arrest me? Art, you've been missing for 24 hours. I've been worried sick about you. Where have you been? Oh, now, come on. I'm positive our anniversary is Tuesday the 14th. It is. The only trouble is this is Wednesday the 15th. You two aren't joking, are you? Your wife reported you missing last night, Tuesday. We've had an all-points bulletin out on you for a whole day. Uh, I've been missing? Yeah. But I... Well... I know I left the office right after I called you, Bonnie. I, I remember saying good night to Miss Scott. Who's she? His secretary. Well, go on, Mr. Cummings. Just just take it step by step. Well, I, I took the elevator down to the parking lot. I crossed to my car. I got in and came home. That's all? You made no detours? No stops? No, I was going to get some flowers, but Miss Scott got these at lunch. She uh, doesn't trust my color sense. Huh. They're wilted. But how... Because you've been missing for an entire day. Something must have happened, Mr. Cummings. You, you, you must have some recollection. I can't imagine. I don't remember a thing. Nothing at all? No. Art, how do you feel? Fine. I feel fine. You're driving your own car? Well, I, I think it's mine. Yeah. That's our blue and white sedan. You you want to check it out? If I may. And uh, you, too. Me? Would you be willing to submit to a few tests? 
Well, what kind of tests? Well, under the circumstances. You mean uh, medical tests? Just a physical examination and a blood sample. But I tell you, I'm fine, Sheriff. There is nothing the matter with me. Okay, okay. I can't compel you without a court order. But I'd appreciate it if you'd change your mind. No. Well, if you remember anything... I'll let you know, Sheriff. Good day. Good day. Art, are you sure you feel okay? Look, I am all right. Couldn't we just call Dr. Kramer and... No. Just to have him check you out. No. But you do work with all that radiation. Honey, it is perfectly safe. Now, why do you keep worrying about that? How many times have we had this argument? Look... I've shown you all the literature on the subject. You know the extraordinary safety precautions we take. Besides, what would radiation contamination have to do with this? That's just it, Art. That's what worries me. We don't know. I don't remember a thing, okay? I'm admitting it. I don't remember. I don't know what happened. For, uh, for all I know, this is some kind of practical joke you two cooked up. It isn't. <sighs> I'm sorry, Bonnie. I... Been a little on edge lately. Then not enough to call Doctor Kramer. I get edgy every time we have a delicate shipment going out. There's always that one in a million chance that something could go wrong. What's going out? Uranium. The truck's leaving at nine a.m. the day after. To, uh, um, no, I, I guess I mean tomorrow. It's going to go to that military installation over on the Snipe River. Art, uh, do you think you were kidnapped? No. Number one, how could I be kidnapped without knowing it? And number two, why wasn't I held for ransom? Well, well, maybe they wanted information. I'm a businessman. I'm not a scientist. I don't know anything you couldn't read about in a textbook. Yes, you do. What? You know your plant's delivery schedules. Over here, Sheriff. I got out here as quick as I could. What happened? Yeah, it looks like a hijacking. Uh-huh. This truck here? Yeah. I saw it parked alongside the highway and pulled over to see if everything was okay. Where's the driver? Found him slumped over the wheel. Is he hurt? He's dead. Shot through the heart. Yeah? Huh? You call an ambulance? Down the way. The truck's contents are gone? You can see for yourself. Holy suffering cats. What kind of machine did they use to cut through these doors? This metal is six inches thick. What was this rig carrying? Well, I ran a check through the plates. Trucks owned by Mr. Cummings' company. And according to the head of plant security, she was carrying a large quantity of high-grade uranium to be used at the Snipe River installation in the warheads of their nuclear missiles. <laughs> it has been observed, is the art of hiding thought. This is often all too true, but Arthur Cummings didn't seem to be hiding any thoughts when he insisted he had no idea what happened to him. For all he claims to know, the day just mysteriously disappeared. But it has also been observed that there are no accidents, and it certainly looks like someone knows where that day went. I'll return shortly with that too. The Bible says that a driver who overloads his beast is either a fool or a boot. A man who takes a great precaution in loading a truck with dangerous materials would not ordinarily be put in either of those categories. Yet, something strange has happened. Something has gone awry. And nobody seems to have an explanation. Least of all the man to whom the finger would appear to point. The only one who knew what that truck contained, Sheriff, was the chief of plant security. And the only persons who knew when the truck was leaving the plant were the foreman and the crew on the loading dock. And the only person who knew both was me. You also knew its route and destination. Yes, I take it upon myself to make all these decisions and be the only one with the information. It reduces to a minimum the possibility of what happened today. But today it did happen. And now a large quantity of high-grade uranium is missing. Yeah. Sheriff, at least it's not as bad as it seems. That uranium is virtually useless for nuclear purposes unless it's charged up, made fissionable. Mr. Cummings, would you accept that there is a connection between your disappearance and this robbery? Well, obviously. Sheriff, those tests you asked me to take... Yes? 
Well, I'd be willing to submit to them now. You sure? A man is dead, and a potentially lethal cargo has vanished. I feel responsible for that. What does the doctor say? Nothing. A blood sample showed no traces of any foreign chemical substance. Hmm. No knockout drops or truth serum? No. And his examination of your skin turned up no indication that you'd been punctured by a needle or incision? Well, I guess I could have been forced to swallow something, but why wouldn't I remember it? Well, the point is, we've got absolutely nothing to go on. Sheriff, um, if I had, I... I mean, would the tests have... have been different if you'd agreed to take them right away? Yes, Mr. Cummings, it's possible they would have. Substances don't stay in the body forever, and wounds heal. I'm sorry. Uh, you see, I'm very touchy about my health. My wife's always after me fretting. Well, with your permission, I'd like to try something a little out of the ordinary. What? I'd like to try to hypnotize you. You know hypnosis? Yes. It's becoming a very effective device in police work. If some form of mind control was practiced on you, it's possible we could break through that. Will you agree to this, Mr. Cummings? Yes, Sheriff. Joey, if you sit in the corner there and monitor the machine... Yes, sir. You ever been hypnotized before, Mr. Cummings? Um, yes, yes, at a party once. Good, good. It's always easier if it's not the first time. Now, just relax. This is very simple. I'm going to count backwards from ten to one. And I'll give you images to concentrate on. And I'll count backwards again. Each time, I'll take you deeper into your subconscious. I want you to relax your mind. Think of it as a muscle and let it relax. You understand? Yes. Good. Five, four, three, two, one. The sun has faded now. You're in total darkness. Floating in space. Can you hear me? Yes. What day is it? Friday. And yesterday? Thursday. And before that? Tuesday. Wednesday, Mr. Cummings. Oh. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Do you remember Wednesday? Yes. And the night before, where were you? At my office. Do you remember calling your wife? Yes, I said I was just going out the door. And then? I left. I went home. Can you see your car? Yes. In its parking space? Yes. You're walking toward it. Can you see yourself walking toward it? Yes. Describe your movements. I come out of the building, and I walk up to my car. And? I get in. You see no one? No. And then? I drive home. Does anything happen along the way? No. How long does it take you? Twenty minutes. What time did you leave the office? Five. And where were you at eleven o'clock that evening? Driving home. Driving home? Yes. Where were you at three in the morning? Driving home. At eight. Driving home. Noon. Driving home. All afternoon. Driving home. How long did it take you? Twenty minutes. And nothing happened? No. Y yes. One thing happened. What? The flowers wilted. Ah. <sighs> uh Oh. oh, what happened? Nothing. I tried to take you through the missing day, but all you did was repeat the phrase, driving home. In a way, we're lucky this happened when it did. Why? Well, I'm due to schedule a shipment of a breeder reactor to the nuclear facility in Amity. 
If that ended up in the same place as the uranium, we'd have someone on our hands who could manufacture a hydrogen bomb. The schedule for this delivery was not set the day you were missing? Oh, no, no. I was going to do that this afternoon. All right, do it now. Now? Yes, and tell me. Oh, oh, so you can provide an escort? No, so I can change it. That way, there'll be no possible chance anyone else could know. Well, how about Monday morning at 10? Eh? Can you send it out Saturday at 9? Tomorrow? Well, yes, I guess so. Good. Then do it. Good day, Mr. Cummings. Oh, I, I can go now? Yes, yes. Thanks, Mr. Cummings. Sheriff. Yeah, Joey. Doesn't this whole thing seem uh, a little far-fetched? Yeah, I mean, Mr. Cummings vanishes for 24 hours and claims he's got no recollection of it. No, no matter what was done to him, it seems to me he'd remember something. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Um, Sheriff Baker? Uh, what is it, Sergeant? This just came over the wire. I thought you might be interested. Oh, thanks. What is it? Wow. Shipment of gold bullion coming down out of the Fosdick Mines near Castle Butte's been jacked. The driver and the guard were killed, and half a million dollars of gold is missing. The Fosdick Mines? Well, all those shipments are top secret. Yeah, they even send out decoy trucks, don't they? Yeah. Whoever did that got through some very tight security. Joey, tell the sergeant I'm on a list of everyone who knew about that shipment. But Castle Butte's not in our jurisdiction. No, but the Cummings case is. And I've got a couple of questions I'd like to ask those people. <laughs> Here's 944 Chautauqua Street. Mm. Mr. Bud Peterson, right? Yeah. He's the last one on the list. And so far, nothing. You think there's some connection between the two robberies, huh? Well, the earmarks are the same. Valuable, top security shipment, robbed. And not a single clue at the scene of the crime. If Mr. Peterson can't help us, we're at the end of the line. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Peterson? Yes? I'm Sheriff Baker. This is my deputy, Joe Sheen. We're from up Shumway Springs. We'd like to speak to your husband. Oh, surely. Come in. Thank you. Bud, there's another sheriff here to see you. Oh. Hello? Yeah, is this about that uh, gold robbery at our mine? Uh, yes, yes. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Yeah. I've already talked to our local officers. Well, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, if I might. Oh, sure. You were one of the people who knew the schedule of that shipment. Yeah, but there were three other guys. Oh, I know. Well, We've already talked to them. And I've asked all of them the same questions I'd like to ask you. Go ahead. In the last couple of weeks, have you experienced anything that could be considered a, a blackout? A blackout? Well, then, is there a period of time you can't account for? It's uh, kind of a bizarre question, isn't it? Yes. Why are you asking? Well, there's been a robbery down our way similar to this one. A uranium shipment was stolen. Mm -hmm. And uh, some guy's claiming he had a blackout? Yeah. Someone who knew about the shipment. Well, my health's fine, Sheriff. You can check with the company doctor. Nothing strange has happened? No. Uh, let me put it another way. And Mrs. Peterson, has your husband been missing for a period of time recently? Uh, no, he hasn't. Okay. Oh, thanks, Mr. Peterson. I'm sorry for the disturbance. I guess we've been on a wild goose chase. Good day, Sheriff. Bud, why didn't you tell them? It's none of their business. You should have told them the truth. Something did happen. You disappeared for a whole day. I told you I don't have any recollection of it. If this got into my medical record, I could lose my job. 
But if the same thing happened to this other man, maybe it wasn't your fault. I don't want to go into it. But what if something else happens, Bud? What if someone else is killed? What if, if, if we're in danger? Please, that sheriff only wants to help you, I'm sure. You must tell him. Oh, all right. Where did he say he's from? Shumway Springs. Yeah, we'll take a drive down. But I don't see what good it's going to do. I don't remember anything. Well, here we are. Do you want me to come in with you? No, no. You, you wait here. Mr. Peterson? Yeah. You. You recognize me? Yes. Yes, I do. That that day, that, that day, I don't remember. That's right. But how did you know I was coming here? I know. And I also know why you've come. But unfortunately, I cannot let you speak to that sheriff. Well, what are you... No. No, don't! No. <laughs> Mr. Cummings? Oh, Sheriff. We've come by to check on that reactor shipment. It got off safely this morning. Uh, can I speak to you? Oh, certainly. Uh, let's go into my office. Oh, is uh, something the matter? Yes, something's happened. What, to that reactor shipment? No. Mr. Cummings, I suspect you're in serious danger. Why? A man was shot to death yesterday evening right in front of my office. He worked for the company that lost that gold shipment. And the same thing had happened to him that happened to you. He'd vanished? For a whole day, with no recollection of what happened. He was on his way to tell me that, but someone shot him first. Well, how do you know that's what he was going to tell you? His wife told me. But whoever shot him, how did they know? What, what is going on? Oh. Hello? Oh, uh, just a minute. It's for you, Sheriff. Oh. Your deputy. Hello. Yeah, Joey. What? When? You sure of the truck's identification? Okay, I'll be right there. Cummings, your truck's been hijacked. The, the one containing the reactor? Yes. But, but how? That's not possible. No one knew its schedule except you and me. Unless you told someone. Well, no, of course not. I... I... I didn't even mention it to my wife this time. So now someone's got everything he needs to manufacture a half dozen hydrogen bombs. Enough to annihilate this country. Every person is ignorant, said Will Rogers, only on different subjects. Well, on the subject which concerns us most at the moment, we're all pretty much in the dark. Whatever game is being played, it's being played extremely well. And someone is gathering some very deadly cards in his hand. Just how he intends to play them will be the topic of our third act. A Greek sage was weeping for the death of his son. Why do you weep? asked the pedant. Since it avails you nothing. That is why I weep, replied the sage. Because it does not avail. This is the beginning of wisdom. But there are situations in which something must avail if disaster is to be prevented. In our present case, the urgency is fraught with difficulty. For it's pretty hard to hit a target when you don't know what you're aiming at. Mr. Cummings, I've got to ask you again to try to remember something, anything, about that missing day. Oh, I've gone over it a hundred times... I'd even walk through it, out of my office, over to my car. Nothing jars my memory. And somehow, someone is getting information there's no way in the world he could get. Mm. It's not as if you were bugged, might. The doctor examined you thoroughly, and if he killed Peterson, there's no reason why he won't try to kill you. Well, what am I supposed to do? Here. What's that? This is my private line at my office, 555-0231. If anything happens or you remember anything, call me at once. 555-0231. Terrific. And what if someone jumps me and I don't happen to be near a phone? And I'm bringing in the state police. I want the whole desert region around here scanned from the air. 
These people must have one heck of a base of operations. And we ought to be able to find some trace of it somewhere. You just talked to Cummings? Yeah. I told him about Peterson. He still says he remembers nothing. You think he's leveling with us? And I just don't think he's the kind of a guy who'd be behind something like this. But no one else knew anything about that reactor shipment. Look, that's got to be a more logical an explanation than some omnipresent criminal that you can't keep any secrets from. How would Cummings have known about the gold shipment? Maybe he and Peterson were in cahoots. Look, unregistered gold could come in very handy to finance a scheme like... like whatever they're up to. Uh, that still doesn't explain how Peterson was shot. <laughs> that's your private line. Yeah, I gave Cummings the number... Hello? Sheriff Baker? Speaking. Uh, this is Arthur Cummings. I've got to see you right away. Well, what's up? I think I'm beginning to remember something about that day. I think I may know what happened. Where are you? I'm just leaving my office. If we could meet somewhere... You name it. Why don't we meet at the county fairgrounds? All right, I'll be there in 15 minutes. What's up? That was Cummings. He thinks his memory is beginning to come back. This could be it. You want me to come with you? No, you stay here and mind the store. I'm meeting him at the county fairgrounds. I won't be gone long. Sheriff Baker? Yes? Could I speak with you for a moment? Well, I'm, I'm waiting for someone. Is it urgent? I can assure you it won't take very long. Well... I don't want you calling in the state police. What? You've done too much snooping already. Who are you? That's none of your business. Sheriff, your only business now is to die. What? Throw that... Mr. Cummings. Mm. Mr. Cummings. Uh, uh, what? 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 Oh, Joey. Don't you move. What are you doing in my bedroom? Just keep your voice down. Is that a gun? You get out of bed real quiet, you hear? You're coming down to headquarters. Why? We're doing what we should have done a long time ago before it was too late. I'm putting you under arrest. What for? Well, for starters. For the murder of Sheriff Baker. The sheriff is... Is dead? Well, 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 what happened? You called him. Me? Well, on his private line. The number he'd just given you. Joey, I never called him. Look, I was right there when the phone rang. Well, someone else must have gotten a number. How? How, Mr. Cummings? Just how? Now get some clothes on. Fast. You got Mr. Cummings better down for the night, Joey? Yeah, I'm staying with you tonight, Sergeant. Just in case he's got any cronies who might have ideas about springing him. You really think it was him that killed the sheriff? No other explanation makes sense. Listen, when you took Cummings back to his cell, are you sure he was clean? Yeah, I've rescued him. Why? Well, I don't know. With all this weird stuff going on, when you walked him past our short wave here, there was some kind of a blip. What? That sounded like feedback, you know, like when two mics get too close together. I thought he might have palmed something you missed. Microphone? No, that's not possible. I, I checked him, and the doctor went over him <laughs> practically with a microscope. All I'm telling you is what I heard. Huh. I wonder if that is it. Sarge, let me use your typewriter. What? Well, what are you going to take? A little scenario for me and Cummings to read out loud. Who's that? Uh, just me, Mr. Cummings. I thought I'd come in and badger you a bit since you're here and can't go anywhere. Badger me about what? You see, I'm still convinced that if you tried hard enough, you just might be able to remember a little something about that missing day. Look, how many times do I have to tell... What's that? Are you sure? Uh, well, uh, uh, maybe I do remember something. Yes, I, I think I can see it now. Uh... 
There was someone, but... Yes? Well, what's the matter? Joey, I think I'd rather write it down. Write it? Why? Well, I'm not sure yet, but I, I have a feeling it'll be safer. Oh, all right. Well, come with me. There, there's pencil and paper out front. Now, that's uh, all I can remember so far. Well, it gives us something to go on. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Cummings. I think that under the circumstances, I can release you on your own recognizance. Uh, do you want me to call your wife to come get you? Yes, I... Oh, I mean, um... No, I, uh, don't want to bother her at this hour. Uh, I'll walk home. It's only a mile. You... You mean I'm, I'm really free to go? Yep. Well, uh... Good night. <laughs> I think he played his part pretty good, huh? What the heck was that all about? What did he write down? Nothing. Well, then what did you let him go for? Because I think he's going to lead us to whoever or whatever killed the sheriff. And he's in possession of that nuclear arsenal. Oh. Where the heck wouldn't he let me call Bonnie? It's freezing. Uh, hey, uh, could you give me a lift? Uh, I'm not going far. Of course. Get in. Uh, thanks. I uh, don't usually ask for rides, but... What uh... did you write down? What? For oh, that deputy. What did you write down? Well, I, I didn't... How did you know about that? It won't do any good to dissemble, Mr. Cummings. I want to know what you told him. Hey, how do you know my name? Who are you? What's that thing you're pointing at me? Oh. oh. My... My head, what, what happened? I introduce myself to you a second time, Mr. Cummings. I'm Dr. Jalmar Simon. The second time we've met before? Oh, yes. Though you wouldn't remember the occasion. Nor shall you remember this one. But for a very different reason. But that doesn't concern us just yet. Where am I? This place, it's, it's familiar. We are at the top of a mesa in the middle of the desert. It's... It's like a fortress... An incredible fortress. Yes. You're the man who took the reactor? And the uranium. And from other sources, all the necessary implementation for delivering the bombs I have built. Wherever I choose. How did you do it? Uh, by certain refinements in the age-old art of kidnapping... I let my kidnapped victims go. After I've performed a bit of minor surgery, I implant into their bodies just under the skin small transistorized chips that function like a microphone and permit me to monitor them to eavesdrop. But why don't I have any recollection of this? You were unconscious the entire time. I injected you with a strong anesthetic of my own devising. Well, I was examined by a doctor. He, he didn't find any marks on me. I have invented a machine I call an air jet. It can force injections, such as the anesthetic and the microscopic chips, into the body with such force they literally separate the skin without actually tearing it. And... What are you going to do with all this power? Use it, Mr. Cummings. Use it to get rid of all the ugliness in this world. You mean destroy? Oh, the present can't be expected to understand, of course. But the future will be grateful for the chance that I intend to give the world to, to start over. And me? Mm -hmm. How much? did you remember and write down for that deputy? Well, I, I didn't. I, uh, I did. I I told him everything. He he knows about this mesa. He, he knows the location. Uh, I know that's not true. 
But it hardly matters. It simply means another trip back into town after I've killed you to dispose of the deputy. Simon! What? Can you hear us? Where? Where? What? I've got you in my sight, Simon! Put down your gun! Where's that voice coming from? Above you, Simon! It, Look up! It's it, it, starlight. I can't can't see. Drop the gun, Simon! Where? Where are you? Where? I can hear you, but I can't see! Last time! No! Is he dead? Joey. Joey, I I, I don't know. I, I, I think so. I'm sorry I had to use you to bait the trap, but that's why I had you write your recollections. To get his curiosity peaked so he'd keep you alive. Oh, you arrived just in time. But how did you know? Well, the sergeant caught a trace of a microphone on your body. Wow. This fortress is incredible. <laughs> what was he planning to do with all these weapons? Recreate the flood. What flood? He was going to take it upon himself to cleanse the world. Only this time, not with water, but with fire. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> of us are guided by some kind of inner light. Certain of these lights are like the star the three wise men followed and lead us to wisdom, adoration, and happiness. But many a man has followed a star that turned out to be an ignis fatuus, one of those eerie mirages which hover over marshes and churchyards and lead only to the chambers of the dead. Such a light did Jalmer Simon follow and such was his end. I'll return shortly. Thanks, America, for making Avon number one. Avon's the number one way of looking good. And we're celebrating like we should. You've made Avon America's number one beauty company. And Avon's saying, thanks, America. By offering eight of America's most popular fragrances, your choice of any one of eight for just 75 cents. Avon's the number one way of looking good. And we're saying thanks just the way we should. We've even created elegant, special sized bottles just for the occasion. The Thanks America fragrance offer. Just part of our six week Thanks America celebration. Avon's the number one way of looking good. Thanks America. You never looked so good. I like pickles, but they don't like me. Send your stomach some digel. I like pizza, but it doesn't like me. Send your stomach some Digel. Digel's special combination of antacid and anti-gas ingredients gives you fast, gentle relief from acid indigestion, heartburn, and gas in just minutes. I like hot dogs, but they don't like me. Send your stomach some Digel. For occasional use, always directed. Discover the Dermasoft formula for hard, callous skin. Apply Dermasoft cream to feet, hands, and elbows as directed. Dermasoft gives you the same callus-removing ingredient that doctors use most. Now you can soften and remove hard, callous skin without painful cutting or scraping. Dermasoft cream. Dermasoft. Laxatives work in different ways. X-Lax pills gently stimulate your system's own natural rhythm. That's the difference. X-Lax pills... For occasional use only as directed. We might say our story fell into that category of mystery we can describe as fanciful with a disturbing dash of the possible. There are many ways to distinguish mankind from the rest of the animal kingdom. And one of the strangest is that we are the only species with a compulsion to terrify ourselves. We do our best to oblige this compulsion seven times a week on Radio Mystery Theater. Our cast included Russell Horton, Hetty Galen, Court Benson, and Ray Owens. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater 
for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The Apple II Plus computer is here, and Computerland is offering a $140 savings on the price to introduce you to the... Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. 